In this video, I take on a 15 minute photo challenge at the Gatwick Aviation Museum. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV and this is a 15 minute photo challenge. Now I've come to Gatwick Aviation Museum. Now this is somewhere I've photographed before, but I'm gonna use a camera that I've never ever used before and it's this little guy right here. This is a Canon EOS M. And it is well, it's absolutely tiny. Now, Canon tell me this is a Canon 650D or T4i, but in a compact body. Well, I'm going to find out by uh, well, putting it through its paces and seeing if I can find some great photos. So, 15 minutes, let's get going. Right, so let's start with this plane here. So uh, I'm going to be using the standard 18 to 55 millimeter lens, the, the kit lens that comes with this. And I'm going to work in aperture priority mode for pretty much all of the photos I would expect. So um, where to begin? Well, let's just start with a general picture and see if we can make it better. So at the 18 millimeter end of the lens, you get a reasonably good shot. Okay, but I think I can get a better shot by trying to be a bit more creative with my angle. So we've got this propeller here. It's got a bit of red paint on it and I love a bit of red. So using the, the widest angle end of the lens, 18 millimeters. Well, let's see if I come down. Now I'm asking the camera to do quite a big depth of field here. So I think what I'll do is I'll just put the, the aperture all the way to 22 for maximum depth of field. I'll need to watch the shutter speed. So to make sure I don't get any camera shake, I'm gonna press the camera up against the propeller so it doesn't move. Just to make sure I've got it all nice and sharp. There we go. Pretty good. Okay, so that's, that's um, a great shot to start with. Let's go on and find another plane to photograph. Yeah, okay, I like this one. This is a, a great looking plane. Yeah, okay, so we can change the angle. If I, if I look down the nose of this plane, that, that kind of works quite well. Again, I might just try a couple of different apertures. So let's go all the way, all the way to the F32. That should give me a huge depth of field. Move the focusing point. Reflections can often work well in your pictures as well. And I've got a great big puddle in front of me and that's giving a, a great reflection of the sky. But to see it, I'm gonna have to drop down a little bit lower. Yeah, there we go. That works very well. I'm gonna use, a, again, a big depth of field. So a, a big number, F22. Always on the lookout for little close-up textures and, and bits of information that tell a, a bigger story than perhaps a, a wide picture would. So here we've got a, uh, well it looks like a, an aluminium wing and we've got some rust running down and I reckon that can make a good shot. So I'm going to use my 55 millimeter end of the, of the lens here and we're going to test how close this thing can actually focus. Now it's supposed to focus about 25 centimeters. So um, well let's see, let's see if it does. Yeah, that seems to be about right. That's pretty good. Now, when you go in close, you've got to watch the depth of field because the closer you go, the shallower the depth of field becomes. So I'm actually going to be shooting at F11, even though this is a completely flat piece of metal. Okay, just because I may have a slight angle on my camera, and that could be enough just to throw off the depth of field and give you soft edges. Now I'm looking for diagonal lines in my picture because diagonals are great powerful lines and give a great composition to your image. It's quite a messy scene that I'm in here but I've got this red tail fin and engine cover for this plane and I want to get a picture of it. Um, if I try and just take an ordinary shot it's no matter how I hold the camera and how I zoom I'm not getting anything that's that's really inspiring me. 
Uh, I think if I just drop down a little bit lower, that might work. So let's just come down here. And bingo, look at that, that works brilliantly. Blue sky, red plain, very, very nice. And whilst we're here, let's try and get a little close-up detail as well. There we go. Well, you can probably see and hear how close we are to Gatwick Airport, but, um, well, where else would you have an aviation museum, I guess? Um, we've got a Canberra here. This is a Canberra aircraft, and the front of this, this this plastic Perspex nose cone is really, really great as a reflection shot. Uh, I've got to see if this little camera can actually capture that. So let's come in here. Uh, I think I want to fill the frame, so I'm going to go in very, very close. And it's having a little spot of bother focusing, but it got there in the end. That's not too bad, but it looks a little bit overexposed. And if the picture looks a bit too bright, well, I can just dial in couple of stops less exposure compensation. Let's try that. I have to say it's really hard to see on the LCD, but by taking a sequence of exposures, at least I can choose the best one back at the computer and not here in the middle of a 15 minute photo challenge. Right, okay, now, some of the planes at the, the Gatwick Aviation Museum you can actually get inside, and this is a little WASP helicopter um, that is open, so uh, we can get in here. And uh, there's lots of little bits and pieces to shoot. Now, I'm looking at this and thinking probably what I want to do is go for a nice shallow depth of field. So I'm going to use the smallest aperture number, f5.6, to get the smallest depth of field. And then I'm just going to try and pick some bits out, like the uh, little buttons here. Okay, that gives me a reasonably shallow depth of field, but if I lean in even closer, and this is where the LCD really comes in handy, of course, because I don't have to look through the viewfinder, and I, I couldn't look through the viewfinder if it had one. I can just come in here and pick out a button, and that should give me an even shallower depth of field. Remember, going close reduces the depth of field that you have in your shot. Okay, so time is ticking away. I've got time for one more, so let's go do one more shot. Okay, so for my last shot, I'm going to do a panorama. Now, we've done panoramas before on Adorama TV, and if you go back and watch my second episode, you'll see me do a panorama shoot. So check out Adorama TV or Adorama Learning Center for more information. So with this little EOS M, all I'm going to do is start in aperture priority mode, and I'm going to think about my scene and, and what becomes the middle. I'm just going to take a meter reading here. Well, let's just choose an aperture before we do. Let's choose F8. I'm getting a shutter speed of a two hundredth of a second. So I'm going to switch from aperture priority to manual because this camera has full manual. And in manual exposure, I'm going to put in a shutter speed of two hundredth of a second, an aperture of f8. Let's take a picture of my hand first. And I'll cross I go. So I'm gonna really come in close now so that my middle picture of this Shackleton plane is completely filling the frame. And with it completely filling the frame, well, let's see how that changes the final shot. And it's up to you which one you prefer. I do love the one with a bit of distortion that kind of fits my style a bit more. Well, there we are, 15 minutes have come and gone really quickly. The little Canon EOS M, pretty good little camera. Uh, it is very, very versatile. Touch screen works pretty well. A little bit of delay on the focusing, but overall, it's a camera I could probably use fairly regularly. Trouble is, of course, we've got to process these pictures. And uh, well, let's choose my favorite picture from this 15 minute photo challenge. I'm going to run it through Photoshop and I'm going to do that right now. Now, I had a great time at the Gatwick Aviation Museum and took loads of photos, but the one I want to work through is this picture here that I'm going to turn into a black and white image. 
Now, of course, this is a RAW image from the Canon EOS M, so I'm working in Adobe Camera RAW, but the technique I'm going to show you will apply equally to Photoshop CS6 that I have on screen, and CS5 and CS4 as well, and Lightroom 2, 3, and 4 too. So uh, this would work really well in almost uh, any of the modern Adobe products. Now, what I'm going to do here is, first of all, make some basic changes to the color. Things like white balance. Now, the as shot white balance is a little bit cold. I'm going to try Adobe Camera Raw's Auto, which I find to be slightly warmer. And you might think, why am I worrying about white balance when this is going to be a black and white? Well, the black and white tones are based on the colors in the image. So getting the colors right will affect your black and white image. So that's a good thing to do. Similarly, I want to come in and recover a little bit of the, the highlights, get some of that cloud detail back, and also recover some shadows because it's looking a little bit kind of dark and gloomy uh, underneath the plane there. It was getting quite contrasty at that moment in time with the lighting. Okay, that's me done as far as basic adjustments go, but we will come back to this once we've done some black and white work. Now for black and white, I could just jump straight to the HSL grayscale put a tick in the box. But if you want a little bit more control, come up to the targeted adjustment tool, click it and choose the grayscale mix option. Now that will make your picture black and white and it'll take you over to the HSL grayscale tab. But you get a cursor on screen and if I click and drag left and right, you will see if you look at the right hand menu that the blues are changing, which is what you'd expect. But you'd also notice a bit of the aquas changing as well. So what happens is it reads the color under the cursor and changes that in the picture. So if I go for the grass, I'm getting quite a bit of yellows when you think, well, grass is normally green. It's not. It's actually mostly yellow and a bit of orange as well. And similarly, I'm going to come for this red nose cone, which is, well, red and quite a bit of orange too. So uh, I can use that tool to target the colors without having to know what they are. So that gives me a nice black and white effect, but we've got a little bit more work to do. It's a bit too bright down the bottom here. It's pulling the eye down. So I'm going to get the graduated filter and I'm going to dial in, I don't know, about one and a half stops less light, something like that. And we'll drag a little gray graduated filter up over that area. I've also got a bit of contrast in there as well. And I'm going to leave that in because that's also adding to the, it, the effect. Let's just drag down one for the sky. We'll do the same up there just to darken that even further like so. And I'm going to give it a twist so it just hits into that part of the, the clouds and recovers those too. OK, I'm happy with that. So that's my uh, adjustments done. Um, I'm going to go back to the basic panel because now I've done all that, I may find I want to change a few things like adding it a bit more contrast and not surprisingly, adding it a bit more clarity because I kind of like a bit of clarity. And we're done from here. So I'm going to click on open image and we'll exit out of raw and into Photoshop. One last thing to do here in Photoshop and that's to go to layer, duplicate layer and click OK. And then I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Around about 10 pixels in size. Hit OK. And I now have two layers, one that's blurry and one that's sharp. Now I'm going to blend them together by changing the layer blending mode. Currently it's set to normal, which means you can't see through the blurry layer. But I'm going to change it to soft light. And that will take some of the blurry layer and mix it with some of the original sharp image. And that is a little bit too heavy mix for me, so I'll take the opacity and drop it down to about 60% or in that area. Yeah, there we go. And that will give me a nice combination of the two. That puts a little bit of contrast into the picture, so the blacks become a bit richer and the whites become a little brighter. And it adds a very slight softening to the image as well, just to take away a slightly hard digital edge that you can sometimes get with black and white images. So there you go. There's how I created my black and white inside of Adobe Camera Raw. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day.
Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.